missing a Blu-ray slash CD dash DVD ROM player. Uh, they're all about the same to service. Uh, it's basically the tools I used to get this thing apart. They're all a little different, but basically get some methyl hydrate on a Q-tip and you clean the actual LED or the laser lens itself just very carefully. Give it a little rub. Not really hard. Then what I like to do is oil the motor bearing if I can and lubricate the rack that moves the lens back and forth. Usually there's some dried um, grease on here. You want to clean that off and just put a light bit of oil, light machine oil, and some right here as well. Sometimes you see gear, a gear set in place of this worm gear, so you want to clean that as well and make sure any dried grease is off. Uh, to get these apart, it varies from machine to machine, but one thing that's common, open the drawer and then shut it off with the drawer open. And uh, basically I'll give it a quick clean for real and then I'll sh go through the reassembly and you can do it in reverse order, but that is just for this particular model. But they're very similar. Okay, now I've got some methyl hydrate on there. I'm just giving it a very light, light wipe. Looks like there's two lenses on here, so I'm going to clean them both, but be very, very gentle. Then grab your oiler. Give a little bit on the rocks, just a little bit, and as it moves back and forth, it'll it'll uh, distribute that. A little bit on the rock itself here and there, just a little bit though. Don't get too carried away, and basically make sure this turntable, the surface is clean. Give it a little spin. This one feels a little stiff to me but it should be okay. I'm going to try and get some oil in behind the bearing. Sometimes that's tricky. I see this carriage lifts up when this is shut, so we'll see if that comes up high enough. Maybe I can get some oil in there. Sometimes you can't, um, but basically we'll see how that goes. Okay, reassembly. See if I can do this one-handedly. Basically this cover goes on first. They're all a little different. Um, you just have to analyze it as you go. This one there's little clips that snap in right there on either side there and there and then there's four screws that you have to undo so let's give this a whirl okay it's dropped in place uh, did I get it right stand by I need two hands sorry forgot this cover drop it in place and again like I say they're all a little different, so you'll just have to analyze it as you go. Okay, that's in place. And then there's this little magnetic flywheel that goes in place as well. And I've got a couple of screws, so just stand by. Okay, I'm putting the plate back in place. What I suggest to people sometimes is take pictures as you go. I, I do this a lot. This is probably like this thousandth uh, CD ROM uh, laser player whatever you want to call it DVD Blu-ray CD MPEG 3 they're all roughly the same to service so okay got that in place and I will drop the cover on it and make sure everything's sitting pretty with this one there's two clips on this side sometimes I've seen four it's like I say be very very detail oriented uh, make sure you you know get everything snapping just right and then with this model then of course there's a lot of them is like this where you just four screws on the bottom take the bottom plate off and then get the top off but you have to get the drawer out to do it properly okay stand by I need two hands again Okay, I got the cover in place, just tightening the screws. What I like to do, this is usually plastic thread. Um, what I usually like to do is back it up until you hear a little click, it drops in, and then you're not cutting new threads in the plastic. You just basically go backwards, you hear a little click like that, try it a couple of times, and then you'll find a nice smooth thread, and you're not cutting new ones. And like I say, they're all very similar construction. Go one more. 
and there's actually one on the top as well. And on this model, let's tighten those up evenly. Okay, and usually there's these little tabs in here, usually little snaps as well. Like I say, the drawer's got to be out um, to actually get this thing apart. And I think this side doesn't have any, but again, these little tabs are in place. So like I say, it's detail-oriented, take lots of pictures. And this one's a little different. It's actually got a tiny little screw right there, which I don't see very often, but I found that a lot of these machines are very similar for, um, you know, disassembly, because you got to get at that eyeball, at that laser eyeball and the motor bearing and the rack and pinion for the laser. Okay, now the next, I pushed the drawer in there, so basically I'm going to have to power it up, get the drawer out so I can put this piece back and the nose, but that's usually the last thing I do. I get the drawer open, get everything apart, and then put it back together with the drawer open, and then snap the front pieces on last, so give me a minute here. Okay, I've got the uh, unit back together a little bit just to get the drawer open and a lot of times you got to wait for these things to boot up before they'll listen to you. Okay, there we go. Now I'm going to unplug it and then I can put it back together fully. Uh, this way I have access to the drawer to snap the nose pieces back on. Stand by. Okay, now I've got the unit back in place. It's four screws this one. So I'll just tighten these up. There's the little locator pins that snap in place. A lot of this stuff is pretty easy to uh, to work with nowadays. It's very, they're all very similar. There's slight little differences, but um, you get the idea. It's just a matter of analyzing it and figuring out how it comes apart without destroying anything. Okay, so chassis is back in place. It's all plugged in. So now I'm going to put the nose gear back. I've serviced the unit. And usually the front panel is what goes on first. Um, you have to get this nose gear off before you can usually slide front panels out. And that's with many, many different machines, even car stereo styles. So just give me a sec. Okay, this one just snaps in place very easily. Oh, hang on, I forgot. I want to actually clean the switches with a little bit of contact cleaner. So I'll just whip this back off. I usually like to take just a tiny, tiny amount of contact cleaner and just put a little bit in the switches. There's the on-off and there's the eject. So I'll just do that and I'll stand by. Okay, I got some contact clearing the switches. I operated them, manipulated them. Um, if you don't have a little little oiler device like this um, to put just a bit of, of contact cleaner in there, what you can do, what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll spray a little bit into a rag and you end up with just a little drop on the end of your spray tube. And with that little drop you just touch it. I don't have any on here right now because I've already done it, but basically into a rag and then you've got a little drop and you just drop it in place on both of them, work it back and forth and away you go. So now the cover can go on. Okay, tricky doing this one handedly, but just line everything up and it just snaps in place. Make sure all the clips are in place all the way around and it is then basically um, you put this cover these usually drop on like that you know they you line them up and they snap forward when you're taking them off you got to figure out how to undo the clips and it pops out this way through the magic of editing, I wanted to show these belts in here. That's for the drawer. Unfortunately, there's not any good light, but 
yeah, basically you'll see two pulleys and a belt in there. That's for the drawer. When your drawer is sticky, uh, replace that belt. And there's usually a front cover that goes over top of this. In this case, this one. And again, like I say, you had to get that front nose off to get this stuff in place. And most of it just snaps in place. So you just got to, you know, analyze it. Don't force anything. If it's not coming apart easy, then you're not doing it right. Take a better look at it. In this case, there's a little peg right there that you got to push in. Another one on the other side. And it usually clips in on top here too. So anyways, moving forward. Okay, this step is usually what buggers people up. If you look at this, there's slots right in there. The um, the actual drawer slides in here. Like I said, this goes up and down going in. So I'm just going to line it up. Wish I could give you more light, but you know, what can I do? Uh, okay. A little tricky to do with one hand, I must add. There we go. So I make sure it's snapped in there good. In this case, there's, I wish I had better light. There's little clips right here that you gotta basically pull up and then this front panel moves that way. So basically, that's pretty well it, um, except for putting the back cover on. I'll give her a test before I uh, put the back cover on, but hey, Cousin Bet and Rick, looks like we're rocking here. It looks like I'll get your unit going again for you just fine. This is kind of a strange machine. It almost has a boot up procedure. You first plug it in, it sits there and flashes the standby. And you gotta wait until it's solved. Then you can turn it on. There it goes. Now it's functioning. And of course now it's trying to look for a disc that isn't there. And it'll ignore everything until it's finished doing that. And then you can eject it. But yeah, keep in mind, these are basically computers, and they do have boot up times. Don't expect instant results when you turn them on. Okay, second to last checkout. Drop in a DVD. There you go, reading the disc. And let's see how it does. Usually if there's more problems than this, it's not worth fixing. Basically a quick cleanup and service. Usually what happens is the laser is... Um, basically dirty and the rack and pinion so to speak is buggered up um, is usually greasy dried grease or lack of lubricant and same with the motor bearing and the platter is dirty too so usually if you do this and it doesn't work it isn't worth dealing with anymore and there we go we are rocking and rolling so I'm just gonna throw the cover on and give it one last check Okay, final checkout, everything's plugged in, reconnected, uh, basically waiting for this computer to boot up on this thing. There's a standby light flashing, and then once it goes steady, just because you press a button on one of these DVDs doesn't mean, and it doesn't do anything, doesn't mean there's anything wrong. It just takes a sec because it's a computer. There we go, and again, let's see if it'll respond while it's trying to load no disc. Of course it won't. So I gotta wait until it finishes its procedure. I might as well pause. Okay, now it's finished. It's trying to load. Hit eject. Now it's responding to commands. Drop in a disc. And loading. And, 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 wait for the drum roll. Still loading. Darn computers are not instant like the old analog stuff. And away we go. Voila. Success. We now have a working DVD again. And enjoy this cousin Bet Rick. Hey, and second cousin... Vicky and Ben, this is probably what you'll be watching when you're over at your parents. But anyways, rock and roll. She's happening. Have a good one, cousins. Enjoy your nice, new, clean, serviced DVD player. 
Have a good one. Ciao.